The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your home, uh, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So as we start off the day, what do we have? Well, uh, we're up strongly. Um, somebody made a comment in the den about looking at what was happening. This is one of the easiest uh, expirations to call in probably a couple of years. Uh, uh, I recommended that we buy uh, calls uh, this morning and yesterday in a stock. We'll talk about that. I had a couple of the subscribers want me to walk through the decision-making process on making them. Uh, and uh, what we did and why we did it. But like I said, this was one of the easiest ones to call in a very long time. There's always a little bit of indecision, but uh, to me, it, just every trade, every push, every uh, additional uh, person shorting a sock uh, that looked like it had already probably hit bottom uh, looked... Um, like there was some, uh, there was a fairly good uh, reason to go higher. Uh, I've been working with Basil on a kind of a wisdom of the crowds thing on his nine day moving average. Uh, that kind of really pushed me in the SMHs of thinking that there was probably a significant low coming in those uh, in the last couple of days. I'm not forecasting anything more than a couple of day bounce in a market with options that basically expire at four o'clock today. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But I, to me, it was one of the easier one. It's been, I don't know, several, three, four months before I've tried to really try to buy any options on expiration day, as far as I can remember. Uh, but this one was one of the best. Uh, there was a lot of signals and, uh, I think well, we'll talk about what I saw uh, and what we look at each month, but uh, a, a great payday uh, for those and uh, a little more. Anyway, uh, as we start the day off, we're up 25 points on the S&P cash. The Dow's up 153 and the NASDAQ's up 80. Uh, volume, of course, uh, pretty good. We talked about yesterday that today would probably be a fairly big day because there wasn't a lot of volume. If you generally get Thursday, you get a lot of volume. Basically, all the options have been uh, situated and taken off, and they try to make the market go sideways. Yesterday, they were trying to get everybody to buy a put, sell their calls for less money, and uh, there just wasn't a whole lot of money. I think when we our volume, when we started yesterday's show, looking at like 1.9 or 2 billion shares, we're already at 2.7 billion shares. So this is one of those uh, options expirations that had some fireworks and you could kind of tell it from Wednesday to yesterday, but uh, they're just kind of that expiration dance, uh, something I've worked on for forever. My first uh, article in stocks and commodities uh, in Christmas of 2004 at looking at this, but uh We'll continue to, to uh, talk about that throughout the show. Uh, what else have we got going on? Well, Bitcoin everywhere. Uh, that's done a lot for some of these stocks. Uh, we'll talk about one of the big ones out here that's up uh, almost 3.5% after sitting sideways for a while. And we'll talk about why that is and see if anything else. I think that's about it. I saw a lot of stocks. Options were telling us a a great deal different than what the market was trying to tell us with the people trying to short the equities. Uh, volume was telling us one thing. The market was actually telling us another uh, for going lower. But uh, 
like I said, for the last month, uh, I can be the most ardent bearer in the world. It just almost never pays to be bearish in December. Uh, one day we will be bearish, and you'll get a huge asymmetrical payoff on it. But uh, it is so rare as probably not worth betting on. Uh, but uh, if you did bet on it, one day, maybe in the next 10 years, uh, you'll have a 15% down move in December. But uh, you know, those things tend to even out over time. It's just uh, they are so rare. A lot of reasons, uh, organic reasons like taxes and other things. That's what caused such a huge uh, chaos in 2000, January 3rd or 2nd, when we came back. Everybody was waiting to sell and pay 15% less in taxes. Sometimes there are organic reasons, but uh, we'll see. I suspect that we are now going to be setting up between now and the end of the year for yet another rotation of stocks and into stocks that didn't do particularly well this last year or maybe last two years. The ones that are probably have done the best, like the semis, and those are probably ramping up to have some sideways years and revert to the mean. Generally, you get two or three years in a bull sector like the semis. Uh, and if the market does not fall apart, you still get a reversion to the mean, which means that it may take four, three or four years for that to kind of come up. But uh, it, it is one of those volatile markets, and we'll take a look at it. But to me, a lot of the stocks that weren't uh, didn't have any dances at the ball this year are going to be the ones that have the dance at the ball next year. You can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always post a message in the den. Uh, what else do we have? Well, it's time to get started with a little bit of history. But did I even do my history? I don't think I did. I think I got history from yesterday. So hang on a second. Uh, I will get that. Oh, do we even have time to do it? Uh, we may not. Maybe I'll just do... Uh, Today in history, we'll see. I'll have to do, eh, we'll do this when we come back. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have that I want to talk about today? Again, uh, a lot happening in uh, the Bitcoin realm. Uh, wanted to get to Intel today, and we'll just kind of tease this. But uh, Intel, uh, take a look at it. Up one of the strongest days in a long time. Uh, by the way, I am along this in the uh, daily newsletter, so fair disclosure. I've uh, been sitting in this under 43 uh, when this dipped underneath. It went sideways for a few days. Uh, they have some news that they're building a chip for Internet security in and around the blockchain. And uh, that's why this thing uh, kind of took off like a rocket. Not as much juice as you would like. But my guess is by the end of the year, headed up to 47.30, which is that November 3rd high. So we'll go back and he'll say hello to his little friends. When we come back, we'll talk some history. And then we'll get on uh, to uh, how to do uh, last minute options and putting it all together. Be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And I uh, had a quick question, and uh, that was, can Intel hit uh, 45 bucks today? And I think uh, they're going to try to get it close. Uh, the amount of money lost on puts on Intel is absolutely massive. Um, normally not a huge mover, so they had a lot of uh, people sitting on the wrong side of this and puts that got wiped out today. And, of course, you always get that just uh, eh, news that just kind of sort of kind of happens to come out of the woods on expiration day, well, you certainly got it on Intel. Uh, as we said, uh, we needed to do a little bit of news, so we'll do that. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. On this day in 1791, Virginia becomes the last state to ratify the Bill of Rights, making the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, completing the revolutionary reforms begun by the Declaration of Independence. Before the Massachusetts ratifying convention would accept the Constitution, which they finally did in February of 1788, the document's federal supporters had to promise to create a Bill of Rights to be amended to the Constitution immediately upon the creation of a new government under the document. And, of course, uh, from all those 10 important rules and that were given to us by our creator, so that they could not be taken away by men, uh, gave us all the rest. And... Uh, Probably why we did well for the last few hundred years. Why many people have foundered in their governments. Okay, uh, back to other things going on. Uh, we'll talk about the trade today because a lot of people are interested in it. Uh, to, 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 what do we got here? Uh, so uh, wanted to show a few things. One. I started to watch uh, NVIDIA. Do we do not? Uh, we got it here. What's wrong with this? Oh, there it is. 
Uh, NVIDIA, uh, we've been watching. In fact, uh, I bought some of the 18750 uh, calls yesterday in the 90 cent range. Uh, open, or actually, they drove it lower this morning again. I bought some more. Got my average down to about 75 cents. Uh, but there was about a 90% chance this thing was going to expire at 190 bucks today. Uh, I started selling out around noon. That's when it went through 192. So we had a, a good thing. I got uh, about uh, eh, close to four bucks for the ones that, uh, like I said, eh, probably somewhere around 75, 78 cents uh, on average. Now, uh, this isn't a big move, but one of the things that is nice is that you can make four or five times your money. And that's the important thing if you're trading options on the last day or two before expiration. Uh, you're going to be wrong about 50% of the time. So you, to make it worth it, you're probably going to have to be right four or 500% on the other side, which is kind of my average over all the years and means that you can make some fairly decent money, but you have to be willing to take the hits and take some fire. A lot of people are not able to do that. I understand it. Uh, I both have a very long view, or at least long compared to a lot of people around TFNN, longer view, and a very, very short view uh, that really doesn't have to do with five or 10 minute charts. It has to do with so many people on the wrong side of the boat that they have to give up. Uh, what uh, I had been showing was a kind of a new addition uh, in the last couple of years, I've been doing all the data for the top uh, short sell, sold stocks. And, um, oh, did I get that wrong? Today's the 15th, right? Oh, I got this up because this is when I started looking at it. Now I'm looking at it. Uh, you've got a fairly decent uh, level. In fact, uh, let me do this while I'm talking. So I can actually uh, update this. It'll probably hate me. Yeah, it does. Because I've got this one open now. In fact, let's do this. Let me go ahead and close that. And uh, generate a new report. So I can actually open it here. Means that I probably put the wrong one in the newsletter today, which is not good. Okay, here we go. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, what I wanted to show is that on the 8th, about 26% of the shares were shorted. On the 11th, 27%. On the 12th, 27%. On the 13th, 20 yesterday on the 21st. Uh, although they pounded on this and went heavily short in this thing, they really couldn't break it down into that uh, 185, 186 area. So that was going to act as support uh, even without shorting. Uh, it looked like uh, a lot of people had gotten off of it. Now, when I went to look at the options, uh, there was about an 80% chance that uh, it was going to expire at 190 today. And so when I looked at it, I put those two things together, uh, lots of heavy shorts, people on the wrong side. Has That means that you've got the fuel, at least temporarily, to move these stocks off of where they were. When you looked in the entire thing uh, from Intel, to the rest of them, options all showed fairly strong higher prices. Uh, and while you can make money doing the indexes, generally there's a lot, the chance to make four or 500% on the last couple of days of expiration don't exist as well as they do in individual stocks. Uh, but uh, you kind of put a few things together, super heavy shorting, you really don't break any lower options or continue to show that the option market makers think that it's going to expire at a much higher price. And you kind of watch the thing trade a little bit. I don't pay too much attention to five or 10 or 30 minute charts at all when I'm trading this. I just have to have an abiding belief that that number that I figure out, whatever it is for options is going to be there. In the case of this, I got that and more because of the uh, highly short position, uh, highly level, uh, high level of short positions in it. Uh, but uh, when you look at the end of the day, we'll see how close NVIDIA hits to 190. And that's it. So uh, anyway, uh, a very good day out here today in uh, at least for a handful of things. Uh, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648.
eight. Uh, to, to see, we have some other questions coming in. Uh, answer that one. Answer that one. Okay. Question about Microsoft. MSFT. Okay. Now this one's testing its previous high on lighter volume, and again. Probably don't pay a lot of attention to volume last week of August. Probably don't pay a lot of attention to volume going into the, uh, the last week and a half of, of the new year. It just doesn't matter. Now, will these things correct if they continue to have no volume at the very beginning of the year? The answer is yes. Now, Microsoft, one of the things that you really need to watch is if this thing hits 90 bucks, it's going to 100 uh, there is a huge statistical inference that that happens. And probably the same reason why gasoline is priced at uh, nine and nine tenths. Uh, especially in America, you don't get the same kind of uh, psychological effect in Europe. They think it's kind of bizarre. But in the United States, you get to nine, you get ten. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. A question in the den was, there any kind of significant shorting? And when we look at these percentage numbers, I always have to tell everybody, we get new uh, people all the time. Uh, you get short numbers twice a month 
those are could be as uh, as far out as three weeks ago. So while you can get kind of a general interest of what's going on in uh, uh, shorting the market and overall percentages, that kind of stuff, it's kind of really like driving in the rearview mirror a bit. Uh, I use those numbers to kind of do a dead reckoning for those people that ever took navigation um, and kind of get a good sense of what's happening into it. The question is whether Intel had it. The numbers I have and show here are how many new trades ended up as uh, initiating a short position. You don't know how many people covered those before the end of the day, but you can infer that if there was a lot of shorting, there was probably a lot of people holding them also into the close. They didn't do it for their health. They probably did it for a little while in equity. This isn't like buying an option where you sell it 10 minutes later. Uh, normally, you got to give it a little bit of soak time, like they say on uh, what is that? The the uh, deadliest catch. You got to leave those traps in there for a while to let the crabs come in. Got to let them soak. So anyway, uh, what we were actually saw was not a lot of shorting, which was the question. The last real heavy shorting days were the first, fourth, and then it dropped off a cliff. Uh, when you got back down in the 43s and 44s, my guess is that these guys shorted on the uh, on the uh, fourth and fifth, uh, the big guys, drove the stock down, and were slowly covering in this white languished around in these 43s, and then popped it today. So uh, were a few people probably caught sleeping. I suspect, but there weren't a lot of people shorting the last few days. I think they just ran a lot of people out of the stock so they could get back into it themselves. Uh, stock operators are as old as the hills in the stock market. And if you're in Intel, you want to get a couple extra bucks. Uh, you get a couple of your cronies uh, to uh, write horrible articles about the uh, company. Uh, you tell everybody how the end of the world's coming. You short the dickens out of it any time tries, someone tries to buy it. Uh, then everything kind of quiets down. You cover your shorts and you release the good information like Intel had today. So, and not a whole lot in there uh, to pick it up. So I think, you know, why they did this, I wasn't expecting anything other than Intel to go up anyway and why uh, we were long in the newsletter sub $43. Okay, what else do we have? Um Taking a look at some other ones. Question about the SMHs. Um, I briefly talked, maybe I can get it up here. I think I can. Uh, hang on just a second. I think it's in here somewhere. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why I was also fairly happy about uh, taking on uh, a... Uh, a uh, long position uh, in NVIDIA was the SMHs uh, had normally made some fairly decent uh, uh, signals. And this chart, I think we talked about it briefly, uh, been working with Basil to work on exactly what this is. Uh, I mean, the interpretation of it. But Basil loved his nine day moving average. And I thought, you know how you could make that much better? Let's do a wisdom of crowd things on this and put every stock in the SMH and how many of those are above the nine day moving average and how many of those are on the bottom side of the uh, nine day moving average. And guess what? <laughs> it works pretty damn good. <laughs> you can find lows extremely well. Uh, it works kind of like, uh, at least for me and what I've done in the last month on this, is look for uh, the equivalent of what uh, they use in the summation index, which is these little uh, what they call fish hook looking things. Um, I'm kind of keeping my mouse over that. In fact, maybe I can uh, zoom in just a little tighter. Um, right here uh, on the 28th and into the 1st, you see that the most amount of stocks, pretty much the most every stock in the SMHs was under the nine day moving average. Uh, so as they started popping higher, you wanted to, uh, oh, I gotta guess go the other way. You probably wanna go a little higher. Uh, you had a nice spike, you pulled back a little bit, which is if you go through these long enough is kind of 
uh, the standard pattern is you pull back a little bit and then you drive back. My guess is this is going to go right back up uh, toward the highs in this. But, you know, you don't have a lot of stocks uh, in the SMHs, about 25. Uh, so you're not going to have it as, uh, as many as others. Uh, I've done the one for the XRT, the, uh, which are about 85 stocks, uh, and the IBB and some of those other ones. Probably one of the reasons why I wasn't uh, all that excited about jumping on the IBB until maybe the beginning of the year. Uh, but uh, starting to look at these things as a, a kind of a little bit better short-term option than maybe the summation index uh, that we have in the, uh, which is, eh, for the most part, what's this? I don't know what it is, but it's weird. We'll take a look at it. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Oh, I wanted to look at some other ones' stocks here. We looked at Microsoft, looked at NVIDIA, looked at Intel. I'm going to look at, uh, oh, Adobe on earnings. Uh, uh, yep, today was there. It was a good day to be long Intel and other stocks. Probably all of them actually had some fairly decent turnarounds. Uh, Adobe Systems uh, yeah, open and kind of flat today. Doesn't look like there's going to be a great deal of change. Uh, if anybody has any questions, make sure and give me a call today. We got plenty of time here before the end of it. Uh, Want to just let everybody know that I will be on vacation uh, starting Monday, coming back like the 3rd of January. So I normally take off a couple of weeks, a uh, week uh, in Thanksgiving and a couple of weeks in in uh, the summer. Uh, it's important. In fact, uh, Joe DiNapoli, uh, when I was talking to him in the early 2000s, just getting started, he said probably the best advice he could give to people is get lots of vacation time. I probably don't take enough. I took a lot more before I started doing um, the uh, newsletters. Now the problem is it, take, it takes you just as long um, to get started. Uh, any subscribers, uh, you will get your newsletters. They never stop because I never sleep. Anyway, uh, to, 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 so we're all set. Wanted to look at some other stocks out here that I thought were interesting. Oh, let's go look at the IBB here. Um, a lot of times, if you're going to get a stock that's really going to start to move, it's moving this week already. I, I didn't think that there was a lot of bearish, uh, bearishness to have in the IBB, but this is not a bad-looking pattern. I like the way it tested the low. But for me, the IBB is more about next year. Is this going to be a sector that everybody rotates back into now that it had its big run and it went back and tried to get to the uh, long-term mean of that? And I think the answer is yes. We'll uh, talk more about this when we come back. My thoughts now until the end of the year are all about where where's the puck going to be in January? What are they going to rotate into next? It is a fast market, a lot of gamblers, and it's going to be fast money. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com. And when when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're going to go right to Dan in Miami. Thanks for the call, Dan. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Uh, on uh, Seventh Heaven, floating on a first cloud. Of all, first of all, I'm having a little phone issue. I might cut out on you. But my questions are, I was wondering what looks like the gold contract kind of gave it back a little today. Yeah. Second of all, uh, I just saw on the news that this net neutrality thing you've been speaking about recently is 20 attorney generals today are suing somebody over this. I just saw on the news. Yeah, so it's going to end up. Is, go ahead. What's your view on gold going for? It looked like it gave most of it back today. Uh, maybe it, next week it's a buy or what? I don't know. It looks. I, I, I would. I think the miners are doing well. Um, silver outperformed today. Um, right? Yeah, up, still up 15 cents. Last I looked. So, for me. The miners, at least the charts in the miners, I'm not looking at gold itself. Charts in the miners look good. So that's probably telling you gold looks good. I've got positions in in those, and they uh, – let me check the price, make sure nothing happened during the show out here. Uh, I got one that's up 11 uh, – up 5% uh, today. Uh, what's the other one up here? The other one's uh, up half a percent. So I'm feeling pretty good about gold, but I'm in the miners. Uh, all the charts and stuff that I showed this week, they were all the miners. They weren't the metal itself. So maybe the metal is bases out here. Uh, maybe there was enough uh, forward selling to hold the miners up a little bit more than the metal itself. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I haven't played gold stocks in a year, and I like them here. So, what does that tell you? Well, I see your point. Okay. I mean, we went through the last week of the shows uh, of showing all the stocks that were testing previous lows on half the volume, all the Gartley patterns. Um, you know, if if it turns south, then it turns south. But I, it's rare. I'll, I'll tell you what. That when I really became a trader that made a lot of money. Uh, on occasion, and that was every one of in 2000 Mark or no, in May 5th of 2008, every single one of the broker dealers and lenders, anybody that had anything to do with the housing debacle, all I mean, like 18 of them, all tested their previous high on half the volume that day. And if you go back in it, you go through those charts for the companies that are still in there. Lehman Brothers, of course, went out of business. So you won't be able to find them. And every time I've seen a huge amounts of 
uh, stocks in the same sector all tell me the same thing. I've always made money, sometimes more, sometimes less, by taking that signal. Uh, as I said earlier in the show, I'm working with Basil on that nine-day thing, which is really kind of a wisdom of the crowds thing. And that's showing a lot of promise, too. So it's hard for me to see a lot of stocks all giving fairly decent signals and being kind of bearish here. Uh, does it take a long time? Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we could be in is the last leg of gold. I know that there's some people that are big on Precker and his, uh, uh, his systems, but the, the only thing that you know is that you don't know what leg you're in. One of the interesting things, though, he did come up with is when you're in the last leg of a run is that it just goes up a little bit and there isn't poor volume, but there's not good volume either. So could we be in the last leg of gold in some kind of giant ABC on the way up that just goes up a little bit every few days? I think that, that, that may, this may be the last big run in gold. I've been hoping for one anyway. And that means that you could go from you know the 12, mid 1200s uh, now that we consolidated for a while up higher. Um, if it doesn't, I'll sell them and, and go on. But uh, I, everything that uh, right now tells me that there's probably a good run in gold, at least if not a bigger possible one out here. So uh, for a guy that doesn't play gold very much, I'm playing gold. Yeah, the gold stocks. Oh, I'm having computer problems here, so I think I better hang up my own. But thanks okay. a lot. I appreciate it. You bet. Have a good day. Bye. You can give me a call, too, like Dan, at 877-927-6648. Um, I had some decent patterns uh, that I was playing, and I think these things actually outperformed a lot of them. Um, and the reason why, I won't get into that chart pattern today. I'll talk about it when I get back uh, in January, but I call it Lazarus pattern, uh, and that is just when a stock goes sideways uh, at a low price, and it just looks like there's a buyer sitting underneath it. And I saw that in one of mine, and actually it was, out of all the gold miners, I think it was the second best performing over the last few days. So it there are some clues and patterns out here. Uh, I played one that was just a test of a previous low, and the other one, which is this Lazarus pattern, but just, just all the other Gartley patterns and all that stuff just makes me think that there's something bigger going on in the miners. Showed them, I think you can go back to Larry Pesavento's show on, was it Wednesday or was it yesterday? Man, I forget everything that goes on. It was either Wednesday or yesterday uh, where I sent them all the charts uh, that I'd come up with with the Gartley patterns, and they all look fairly good. The, the last legs back down were all on very light volume, which really made a lot of these miners look good. Uh, gold, the metal, may not look as good. Uh, silver kind of looking a little better. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Anyway, we're talking about the IBB. And uh, uh, again, you really want to be skating to where the ice is. Maybe you have an idea of what everybody's gonna be looking at the first week or seven days or 10 days of next year. But if it ran this year, let's talk like the SMHs and some other ones, a lot of times those things will come off. They've had a good run over the last couple of years and you get a faster horse. The question is, what would people go to as a faster horse? I suspect that maybe after a couple of year, uh, years of getting beat on, uh, the biotechs may be ready for yet another big run. There's some new technology uh, coming to the biotech sector. Um, I'm in that in the Tech Insider. Uh, those are some ones that are going to be uh, probably absolute monsters or nothings. But um, that's kind of the way that biotechs are. And uh, the old saying is that bio, the, the uh, biotech traders sleep like babies. They wake up wet and screaming. That's always the way it is. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Oh, and Dan's uh, looking at. Uh, uh, you got, uh, okay. Good enough. Just somebody sending me some messages I needed to read real quick. Congratulations, Dan. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Well, we're going to the break. 
we're going to have a very short uh, section, and that'll be the end of the show. But, of course, we'll be talking with Tom O'Brien at the bottom of next hour about technology. That'll be my last Technology Insider edition of the year. We'll talk about a few things going on in that. And uh, then we'll see you next year. Be back in a minute. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Come join me next hour as we bisect and dissect these markets. Right here on TFNN. Wow! And we're back. And uh, somebody thought maybe TFNN wouldn't be here next week. But yes, they are here. It's only me on vacation. So not to worry. Still going to be out here all the time. Nothing changing. Nobody going anywhere. Uh, so anyway, we're going to look at a few other things. A uh, question uh, came in about Apple, AAPL. Uh, to, to, to what else did we have out here? Um, I want to talk to Tom about this in the next hour also. Uh, he was kind of interesting uh, about uh, his uh, uh, time going into Best Buy and seeing it actually fairly crowded. Um, and one of the things that I did write about in the Tech Insider last week was that, that for the first time, Apple was having actual sales. So, I mean, not just saying they're going to have a sale, actually discounts, uh, trade-ins, things that just normally weren't and haven't been around on their first-level products. You know, it's not a big surprise if they sell an iPhone 6 at a discount. 
But if they're allowing trade-ins on their flagship product, maybe that's a little different of a story. Uh, but uh, I think maybe some of those sales are starting to bring people into the uh, computer side, technology side of Best Buy. Maybe he'll have some more comments about that. Um, but uh, that's about it. I don't know if there's anything else to say other than uh, we got the pop that we were expecting uh, in and for uh, options expiration. Everything pretty much worked out the way uh, that it should. Now uh, it's the slow slog into the end of the year, which normally you just see, you know, the market stumble up a little bit each day as shorts get out of the way. And unless something really drastic happens, that's all you're going to see is just a little higher each day. Not going to get rich, but certainly you don't want to be short. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here January 3rd again. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold.